In this problem, we want to find the equivalent mass and spring element using kinetic and potential energy. So the system is composed by two masses that move linear, M1 and M2, and they are fixed to K1 and K2 respectively. And we have then a bar that is rotating about point, let's call this point O, and it has a rotational spring. That bar has a mass moment of inertia respect to point O of J sub O. Let's find out then the kinetic energy. The kinetic energy of the system is the sum of all the kinetic energy of each element. So we will calculate the kinetic energy for mass 1 plus the kinetic energy plus mass 2 and the kinetic energy of the bar. Let me paste here uh, the system in a generic position. So we are moving the bar in contraclockwise direction. And we have theta, this is a small theta. This is A and this is B. Since this is only one degree of freedom, we want to relate the motion of that X that is moving mass 2 with the motion of mass 1 which is x1. So if we do similar triangles and proportion, we get that x1 will be a over b x, which is the variable we want to write our kinetic energy. For small theta, we can also say theta times b, which is x, therefore theta in terms of x is x over b. So our kinetic energy for the first mass is one half mass one velocity of mass one square and the kinetic energy for mass two is one half mass two velocity of mass two square and then the kinetic energy of the bar since we are taking it from a fixed point will be the mass moment of inertia times the rotation which is theta dot square. In terms of x and we will substitute theta with the expression that we found. And then we can write the kinetic energy as one half mass a over b velocity all that square plus one half mass two x dot square plus one half the mass moment of inertia times velocity over b square. And we take out the x dot which is common for every single term Let me do that and then as you see everything that is on the bracket becomes the equivalent mass that dot square. So we can write here that the equivalent mass will be equals to mass 1 a squared over b squared plus mass 2 plus the mass moment of inertia respect. This is very important to understand that this equivalent mass is when we express the kinetic energy respect to x. If we express the kinetic energy respect to theta or x1, we will have a different value for that equivalent mass. Similarly, we have to do the same for potential energy to find out the equivalent constant of the spring. The potential energy will have the component regarding the springs and the weight. In case of the spring, we have two linear springs and one torsional spring, and then we have the weight. We can write the potential energy then Let's write then first the components of the spring will be one half the constant of the spring times the displacement of that uh, mass one where the spring is attached one half k2 x2 square plus one half the torsional spring theta square and then we have the potential energy of the weight which is mgh. Let's find out that h for that, I, let me draw here my bar, and then I have to find the position of the center of mass respect to the point where I am rotating.
So the half of the length of the bar is 1 plus b divided by 2. And the point where we are rotating is at a. Between a and g is d. So d will be the half of the bar minus a. That will be b minus a divided by 2. Then we have to find the h. The h will be when the bar is vertical minus when the bar is tilted. So h will be d minus d cosine of theta, which is d times 1 minus cosine of theta. Since cosine of theta is a nonlinear expression, we have to linearize this expression for small values of theta. And remember that we can write the Taylor expansion as 1 minus theta squared divided by 2 plus other terms. And if we can not only take the first term because we are subtracting 1 minus cosine of theta. So we have to take the second term as well. So 1 minus cosine of theta is theta squared divided by 2. Then we have h, which is d theta squared divided by 2. Now we want to put that in terms of x. And remember that theta is equal to x divided by b. So h will be b minus a divided by 2, and now x divided by b squared, and 1 half. Therefore, we have that h will be b minus x squared divided by 4b squared. Now that we find h, let's go back to our potential energy. This will be 1 half k1, and x1 will be a over bx, and that was all squared, plus 1 half k2, x2 is x, that will be squared as well. 1 half k torsional, theta and theta is x over b squared. Oh, I forgot the square of the x, now I got it, plus the weight, which is mg, and we have h, right? And b minus a, 4 divided by 4b squared, x squared. Now let's take into the bracket k1 a over b squared plus k2 catorsional divided by b squared plus mg b minus a. I will only divide it by 2 b squared because I have to take 1 half out. And all that bracket multiplies x squared. What is inside the bracket is the equivalent constant of the spring, which is k1 a over b squared plus k2 k torsional divided by b squared plus mg a minus b minus a divided by 2 b squared. So in this problem, we were able using kinetic energy and potential energy to find out the equivalent mass of the system and the equivalent constant of the spring, which are all the elements capable to accumulate potential energy.